for this first. Okay, share my screen now. Sharing my screen now. So for this afternoon, we'll be talking about the fundamentals of differential equations. And of course, it has to start with a review of the mathematical tools that you will be primarily using in this course. So you will be using differential calculus and integral calculus. I did not any more place here a review for algebra and trigonometry because actually they have been repeatedly uh, taught to you, shared to you by your teachers since high school. So what I have here is just a review of your calculus subjects. Okay. So for what for now we'll start with this uh, two items. So it asks number one asks for the second derivative of three x cubed plus two over x. Number two asks for the derivative of the quantity three square root of x minus five raised to eight. So let's see if you still recall your differentiation techniques and you. I'll be waiting for those who, have, who are ready with their pens and their papers there and give me the answer for the derivatives of these two. That is the answer for letter for number one. The second derivative for number two, the first derivative. Number one is very easy. Even number two is very easy. These are just bad differentiation. Anyone? Um, excuse me, miss. <clears throat> yes? For number one, the answer is D, miss. Okay, the answer is D, correct. So number one is D. Thank you for that. What about number two? What about number two? If you don't have your mic on, you can use the chat box. You can place your answer in the chat box. I will leave those answers. What about number two? It's just a simple case of chain rule. Chain rule applied to differentiation. What's number two? So each E, what about number two? It will not take you more than 30 seconds to finish the differentiation of this. What's number two? Mm -hmm. If you're having difficulty differentiating this one, I don't know what to expect in the real differential equations later on. Because this one is even mechanical compared to real differential equations. What's the answer for number two? Um, excuse me, miss. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, still num still letter D, miss. So this is still is a up. What about the others? What about my students last semester? This should be even fresher in your memory. Okay, Isaac is correct. The answer is letter D. Okay. I will not bother to place in there the solution because this is supposed to be review. So I'm not supposed to teach calculus here. I hope I'm not wrong. I'm supposed to teach here differential equations. Okay, so I will proceed with the next slide. Now, what do you have here on the next slide? I will just first clear the markings here.
let's uh, excuse me class Okay, you're seeing here two problems on differentiations as well. I'd like to have my new my students last semester to answer this. Find the derivative of, by the way, there's a, there should be an F here. So this should be an F of X equal to the square root of second X squared. And for number four, you are asked to find the derivative of the log of x cubed minus 2x to the base four. Okay. Feel free to chat on the chat box. What is the answer for this two? You may type the letter only corresponding to the correct answer. Let's see. Uh, for number three, it's letter B. Is it letter B? Ivet says it's letter C. The answer is letter C. Okay, the answer is letter C. What you're going to do here is you're going to uh, use again chain rule. So you will apply first power rule because your second function is raised to the power one half, then that would be power rule of differentiation. Then it will be followed by application of differentiation on the second x squared function, which will require for the derivative of the second of x squared and the derivative of the argument of the second, which is x squared. Okay, so it's letter C for number three. Okay, uh, what about number four? Four. Okay, so John, Gio, and Kent also answered letter C. What about number four? What's the answer for number four? Okay, number four. So Jewel says number four is B. The same thing with Nika. So that's correct. Very good. So your number four is letter B. Now, if you have forgotten already the chain rule in differentiation, or the differentiation concerning log functions, trigonometric functions, please do review them because you need those in here. Same thing with your last semester's uh, subject in integral calculus. So now we're done with the review on differential calculus. We'll have integral calculus. Okay, so you have two integrals here. The first one is the fourth root of x to the fifth. And the second one is 8 cosecant y multiplied to the quantity cotangent y minus cosecant y. What do you think is the answer? You may uh, shut them on the chat box. So you may type the letter corresponding to the correct answer in the chat box. Okay, I have two here. So for number, so for number, number six, what do you mean number six? For number one, it's letter, it's letter, <laughs> okay. 
It's letter C, correct. Okay, it's letter C. Number one is letter C. And what about number two? Number two, so can Gio Ernest, Ticholo, Nika, Bobby, C. Okay, what about number two? What do, what's the answer for number two? You need first to simplify the expression written after the integral sign prior to applying a, an appropriate technique or formula. What do you think is the answer for number two? Yvette says it's letter D. Very good, Iha. The same thing with Nika, letter D. Okay, so the answer for number two is letter D. Now, okay, Gio also answered D, same thing with Michael. Now, we go to, let me clear the things here, we go to the next slide, the last two of the integrals. Okay, number three gives you a fraction, a rational expression to be integrated. And number four gives you a second function in which the argument is an exponential function. Whenever you're given a rational expression or a fraction, you have to check the degree of the polynomial in the numerator, the same thing excuse me, with that on the denominator. So if the degrees are the same or if the degree of the numerator is greater than that of the denominator, you will divide. If, it's, if the degree of the numerator is less than the denominator, you are to check if ln will work. So ln or if not, you have to factor the denominator and use the method of partial fractions or simplify first before you use the method of partial fractions. Okay, answers are already in the chat box. Okay, so Bobby, Sean. Okay, the answer is letter A for number three. So number three is letter A. The derivative of this will need your numerator to be multiplied by three and you need to place one third before your integral. So the answer is A. What about number four? Number four is A. Bobby, okay. Gamali mali na si Bobby sometimes. So your number four is letter A. This one can be written in the form second squared E raised to four X. And we know that the second squared is the derivative of the tangent. So you need to make sure that this E raised to four X is in here because it's its derivative. You lack four, so you introduce four here to place one fourth outside. So Bobby is correct. The answer for number four is letter A. Should be tangent E raised to four X divided by four plus C. So thank you everyone for answering or for participating, okay? Really happy if my students are able to participate. Though right now, I'm already thinking what happened to your differential calculus. Why? Because you can even answer your integral calculus faster than your differential calculus. In my opinion, differential calculus is even a lot easier than integral calculus. Probably you have short-term memories. Okay? Short term lang ka mo, hindi ka mo long term. So ang dugay na, hindi nyo na madumduman. Okay, so now we proceed to our main topic for the afternoon and that's the differential equations. 
So when you speak of the differential equation, it's the same with other equations, only that we have what we call the function and its derivatives present on it. If your equation does not contain any derivative, your equation is not a differential equation. It's just an ordinary equation. It's not a differential equation. Or it might be falling on other categories or other types of equation, but the requirement is your equation should have the presence of a derivative or of derivatives for it to be called a differential equation. Now, we have two types of differential equations, the ordinary differential equation and the partial differential equation. So in your differential calculus, we mean ordinary differential equation if the derivative that you see are using the D, the ordinary derivative like dy dx, dv dt, or a second derivative of S with respect to T, something like that. So this is ordinary. Your equation or your differential equation is referred to as an ordinary differential equation if the derivatives you're seeing are something like this. Now, whenever you see this symbol, like, like this, This is already a partial differential equation. Why? Because we have, this is referred to as the curly D. Most faculty call this the curly D. So it's easy to tell that your DE is a partial DE if you see the curly D. But the thing is, if you're going to base the differentiation of the two types on mathematically what is found there, this is how they should be differentiated. We speak of an ordinary differential equation having only one and only one depend, uh, independent variable. And your partial DE has more than one dependent variable. So now I'm mentioning about dependent variable and independent variable. So you could see here in this particular, I use this as the example. The variable that appears in the denominator, in this case, that is the x, this is the independent variable. The variable that appears in the numerator of your, of your derivative is the dependent variable. In some books, it's also referred to as the function for the unknown function. Now, if this is the derivative that you have in your differential equation, your independent variable is T, your dependent variable is V. This is your unknown function. Here, your unknown function is S, your independent variable is T. So it should be noted that when we speak of an ordinary DE, we only have one type of independent variable. It's not an ordinary DE if your differential equation has more than one independent variable. In that case, it's now called the partial DE. In this particular example of a partial differential equation, you will notice that in here, you have Y as the independent variable. On the second derivative, which is a second order derivative, you have already Y and Z. So the entire partial differential equation has two independent variables. And those are y and z. The dependent variable is x. So the dependent variable is x. So the two are actually distinguished based on the number of independent variables that it has. So ordinary only one, partial more than one. So that's it. But uh, if in terms of the look, if we'll just simply base it on how they are written, on how they look, then it's so easy to tell which is partial and which is ordinary. So this is ordinary, this is partial derivatives. Okay, then, oh, sorry. Then we go to the next slide. 
Now, when an equation involves one or more derivatives with respect to a particular variable, the variable is called an independent variable. So the variable present in the denominator. A variable is called dependent if the derivative of that particular variable occurs. Those that are not variables, meaning the letters that you see in your derivative are your variables already, either independent or dependent. What about if you see other letters in your differential equation or other symbols? So we call those letters and symbols as parameters. They are not to be considered as variables because the variables are the only uh, letters that you see in the derivative itself. So if a letter in the alphabet is not found in your derivative but appears in your differential equation, it's a constant. It could be a constant or it could be what we call as a parameter. Now, uh, in terms of the order and the degree of the DE, so let's look up, look at this. The order of the DE is the order of the highest order derivative appearing in the equation. You have to look for the highest order derivative in your equation. Whatever that order is, that is also the order of your DE. On the other hand, when we speak of the degree of the DE, it's dependent on the highest order derivative in your DE. You have to know or you have to check as to what exponent or power it is raised to. So if your highest order derivative is raised to an exponent of 3, then the degree of your DE is 3. If it's not raised to any other exponent, it is understood to be degree 1 because we don't write normally the exponent 1 in anything. So it's understood to be of power 1 or exponent 1. So first determine the highest order derivative. That is the order of your DE. Then check its power or its exponent that is already the degree of your differential equation. Miss, question, miss. Yes? Ang degree, miss, dapat whole number gitna. No, it could be three halves, five halves, one fourth, depende. So you may answer of degree three halves, of degree one fourth, but oftentimes what you see in books, they are whole numbers but they can be fractions. There are examples you can look on the internet. There are examples in which the degree oh. is not a whole number. Okay. If you're going to go back to textbook, it does not specify that the degree has to be a whole number. Need not be a whole number. As long as it is the power to which the highest order derivative is raised to. Now, we go to linearity of the differential equation. Now, if your derivatives in the differential equation have powers all equal to 1, your uh, differential equation is said to be linear. Although, if you're going to look back or if you're going to refer it to Shom's outline, in differential equation, there are still other tests to check whether your differential equation is linear. For now, we'll just leave it to this, that whenever the exponents of the derivatives in your differential equation are all one, then the DE is said to be linear. Otherwise, if it's not one, let's say it's 0.5 or 2 or 3, or negative one, then your DE is said to be non-linear. So it's only linear when the degree is equal to one. Now, it doesn't follow though, however, class, let me just emphasize this. Huh? It doesn't follow that if the degree of your DE is one, it's already linear. Like for example, I like to write this one. Doesn't follow that all first degree DE is linear. Okay. The order of this DE is second order. The degree is one or first degree. But you see this derivative, it is raised to an exponent which is two. 
So you may wonder why this is nonlinear based on this particular uh, idea in the parentheses. Not all first degree differential equation are linear because this one, this is not first degree. Uh, this is first degree, but you see this derivative as an exponent raised to two. So the entire, the entire differential equation is said to be nonlinear. Although that if this is first degree and we don't have these two in here, it's automatic that your DE is linear. So what I mean with degree one is like this. This one is first degree and all derivatives have exponents equal to one. Actually in Shom's outline, if you're going to base it in Shom's outline in differential equations, even the exponent to which your unknown function is raised to should be equal to one for your differential equation to be linear. If this is two, this is nonlinear, even if it's not two. If this is two, you seem to say that, okay, miss, this is of exponent one, this is of exponent one, so it's linear. No, because your unknown function here is raised to two. So this makes this differential equation nonlinear. This is this particular definition of a linear differential equation based on the derivatives being raised to one is limited only to the concept of elementary ordinary differential equations. But if you're going to look into other reference, which it's a little bit of higher degree than the one that we're using, it even gives you around five to six different tests of the way the functions that are written in your differential equation should look like, that way you can readily say that your DE is linear. For now, we will just limit our discussion here because this is ordinary differential equation, ordinary simple differential equation. So this is how we say that it's linear, okay? The derivative- Yes, Miss. Yes? See, what if see dy dx are just a solution square root? I manipulate to miss ang DE nga i multiply ko i raise ko siya sa 2 para mag 1 ang degree. Or you, it's the or it's degree. the only derivative that you see in the equation. Like oh, kung let's say bi miss mo lang gina siya dy dx lang gid. Para sa solution. Sa anong imo iban pa kay hindi man i equation ko di, amo ni. Um, dy dx is equals x squared yo ma'am. Ah okay. This one. Uh oh oh. Square root siya. Oh, square root siya. So you can raise erase it to two. Ah, so this would Para be one siya. y prime x to the fourth. So on degree yan na mismo one, hindi siya yan mag one half. Oo. Oh, oh. mm -mm. okay. So the dapat i-manipulate -manipul i naman miss ang DE para mag whole number. Not necessarily para necessarily. mag whole number ang i exponent. What if you have something like this oh? You cannot do manipulation anymore because if you want to really manipulate, you write 1 plus the square root of dy dx, then you will have 2x plus y double prime, right? Then let's say, for example, you want to isolate this derivative here, you will have already... I place it here, square root of dy dx is equal to y double prime plus 2x minus 1. That what you mean? So if you're going to raise this one to 2, that way you can eliminate the degree of the de here. The entire thing here is already, this is already a three-term polynomial. You're going to expand it. You meaning you're going to square it, that way you get to isolate this one. So automatically, if you see such an equation as this, there's no need for you to simplify. Why? Anyway, this is your highest order derivative. And it's being raised to 1. So this is the basis of the order of the differential equation. You simply have to check what is the highest order derivative. If it stands alone, there's no need for you to simplify. Stand alone like this one, it stands alone. So this is the order of the order of this derivative is already the order of the D itself. We don't care about the other terms here. And in terms of the degree, we also base it on this particular term. 
unless otherwise maybe you have a a derivative here in square root and have another expression here the same derivative in square root then maybe you can do uh, the process of simplifying first but as i said if the highest order derivative is standing isolated there's no need for you to simplify kiti ang basihan sang order kag degree sya man lang mo why simplify kiti sya man lang imo basihan okay thank you okay okay you have any questions now nah, okay we're clear on the drawings here we go to the next uh, here you have the simple simple examples of the order and the degree of the DE. So the first one is first order, first degree. This is second order, first degree. This is third order, first degree. We can conclude that the first three examples are all linear. Why all the derivatives are raised to exponent of one. And we have only... Uh, in these two, we only have one derivative, and here we have two, but this one is also raised to an exponent of one. So we can say that these three examples are all linear. Linear. What about the last three here? So this is second order, rather first order, second degree. Kaysa lang man siya. For this one, we have two derivatives, but this one is of higher order. So this is second order or order to degree seven or seventh degree. So automatic, this is something like we don't look at it anymore. It's already out of the picture. We simply base our answer to the first term. Our last term is also standing alone in terms of the derivative on it. So order is three, degree is two. So this is how we determine the order and the degree of a differential equation. Okay, now we go to solutions. Solutions of a differential equation. So a solution of a DE is the unknown function or functions that satisfies the given differential equation. If I may say class, the solution of a differential equation is an equation in itself. But we are certain that it is, in a way, in terms of form, the solution of your differential equation because it does not contain any derivative already. Or shall I say, the solution of any differential equation should not contain any derivatives. If it still contains a derivative or derivatives, then it, it, it is not yet the solution of your differential equation. What makes differential equations as well very unique is the fact that it is the only equation which may have all three different types of solutions. So it can have what we call as the particular solution, it can have what we call as the general solution, or the complete solution. Now, these two in the bottom, the general solution and the complete solution has the presence of the arbitrary constant. What do we mean with the arbitrary constant? The C, C1, you see it in book C1, C2. So if whenever you see a C in the solution, then your differential equation is either general or complete. A particular solution, on the other hand, has only okay, has only specific constants on it. So it does not contain any C. So a particular solution should not contain any C. But in terms of how they are defined in the context of solutions of differential equations, this is how they are defined. So any one solution can be a particular solution. The general solution is a set of solutions and your complete solution is the sum of the particular and the general solution. Now, I said that the particular solution does not contain any constant, no Cs, no Cs. The general solution has at least one C. The complete solution has C, the number of constants, or 
number of C's equal to the order of the DE. What do I mean by this? If I am looking for the complete solution of a third order DE, the complete solution should contain three arbitrary constants. So normally they are represented as C1, C2, C3. Arbitrary in the sense that their values are not really specified. So it's a complete solution if the number of C's you see in the solution is equal to the degree of the given DE. Now, it is a general solution whenever you see at least, at least one arbitrary constant. So having said these two statements, it follows class that all, that all complete solutions are general solutions. Why? Because anyway, ang requirement na lang sa general solution, at least one arbitrary constant. So if all arbitrary constants are there, it is also a general solution. So the complete solution of IDE at all times is also a general solution. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereas a general solution may not be at all times equivalent to the complete solution. Your general solution will only be the complete solution at all times in cases of first order differential equation. Kasi kung first order siya ang order niya, once so meaning arbitrary constant, kaya isa lang. So kung anong complete solution mo, amo naman na iya general solution. Whereas when you speak of particular solutions, wala gig kadaya sang C nga may makita. You shouldn't see any C. All numbers or all constants have been uh, solve or determine using what we call specific initial conditions. For you to understand what I mean with initial conditions, let me go to the example on the next slide. Okay, let's have this example. Prove that y equal to negative 2 cosine 4x plus c is a solution to the differential equation dy dx equal to 8 sine 4x. Then it continues with the question, what is the solution for the initial value problem where y is equal to 6 and x is equal to 0? What is this? So let me just clearly say this. Although the procedure that is written here is already a process of what we call separation of variables, if I am a student in your shoes and I don't know yet how to process using separation of variables and integral calculus, I will simply look back on what I've learned in the past, what mathematical tool that I have learned in the past. That way, I can prove or I can validate that this that this equation is a solution of this particular differential equation. How will I be able to do that? Very simple, very simple. I will simply differentiate this. If the derivative of this expression is this, then I can say that this is a solution. Specifically, what type of solution? A general solution because it has one arbitrary constant. At the same time, this can also be the complete solution because the order of my differential equation is 1. Now, so let's see whether this is really a solution of this differential equation. This one, it's okay if I have already thought or discussed separation of variables. But since I was not yet able to do that, then we will leave it to that particular topic later on. So I will just simply use the tool that you have learned in the past. So I will differentiate the solution that is provided. So ano na siya bala? Y prime is equal to minus 2 negative sine of 4x times 4. As for the C, the arbitrary constant, its derivative is 0. If I will simplify this, this is 8 because this one is also negative 8 sine of 4x. So look, they look the same. Then this one is a solution of this DE. Okay, let me erase. Now, 
Now, what will I do then? Next. So it says here, what should be the solution? If the value of x is zero and y is six, what will I do? This particular, part, this particular general or complete solution, I will substitute x equal to zero and y equal to six and see what would be the value of the c. So you can see it here in number two. So if we substitute, we'll have a six here. We'll have negative two cosine of four times zero plus C. So this negative two is to be added to six. It will give you a C which is equal to eight. It follows then now that with the use of the initial condition, initial condition, we call this the initial condition, we are able to determine the particular solution. We're able to determine the particular solution of the differential equation using the general, also other, also the complete solution of the DE. So when you validate, let's say when you're asked to prove whether a particular equation is really the solution of your DE, simply do differentiation and go back to the DE that was provided and substitute. If the left side and the right side of the equation are equal, then you're good. Then the provided solution is the solution of your DE. It's the same thing with this particular sample problem. Oh, what happened? Okay. So determine whether y of x equal to 2e raised to negative x plus x e raised to negative x is a solution of this second order differential equation. Since you see until the second derivative, there's a need for you to differentiate this twice. So this is your first derivative. Then differentiate this again. This will be your second derivative. What will you do with this? You go back to your DE and substitute. So we substitute the second derivative plus two times the first derivative. We see this. About the y, it's that solution itself that was provided. So if the left side is equal to the right, then this particular solution or this particular equation is a solution of this differential equation. If you would be asked what type of solution is this, this is a particular solution. Why am I certain that it's a particular solution? Does not have any C. So it's a particular solution. Okay, so we're done with module. Hmm. Oh, sorry. So we're done with module one. Okay, you will get your quiz on Monday, uh, 4.30 to 5. Then I will continue with first order differential equations for the next 30 minutes. Any question, class? I will stop sharing now. If you have any questions related to the materials that you see in Canvas or in the problem set, you may work on that, start working on that because the, the deadline I think is next week. You can message me in our GC, that way your classmates can also see your question they may have the same question as, uh, as you, or they may have the same, the same concern as you. So I can answer uh, the question only one. But if you want to, to ask it privately, it's okay with me. But I encourage that your questions be posted in the GC. Okay. So any questions, class? Have any questions? I gather that you don't have any questions. We still have five minutes. Miss. Yes. Ang problem set, Miss, individual, no? Kung wala siya nakabutang for now na it is a group requirement, then it's really individual. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Okay. Some more questions? Even if it's an individual requirement that you will need to submit, you can still collaborate with one another. That way you get to share ideas. 
It's just that you are to submit it individually. Any questions? So we wait for the merging for the, there are four things that we need to do next week. I need to, you need to do your grouping because we have already the final course. I need to give you my cons final consultation hours. I need to give you your personal Google Drives. And most importantly, I need to give you your final schedule with the asynchronous and of course the synchronous times of meeting. Okay, but if I don't post any announcement in Canvas, we will meet at the same time on Monday, on same time Monday. As to what link you will use, it's in Canvas already because every Monday we have the same link. It's a recording link that I have set already for all the Mondays. Okay, if there are no more questions. 